bits which are relevant to the SD card, um, whether they're the SD card present. So we're making sure that the card is there before we write to it. Um, we're checking to make sure that the card is write enabled. On most SD cards, you'll see that there's a little switch that you can flip back and forth just to, to protect writing value. So we want to make sure that that switch is not engaged if we're going to write to the card. And then also system bit 340 here is a, a status bit to tell us that the, there's nothing in progress when we're trying to write to the card already. So the next block, which I have highlighted right now, is actually what's going to, to do the writing from the data table to the SD card in the ULG file format. Um, so all of the SD card writing utilities can be found under the SD menu. And in this case, the SD data table utilities is what we're using. And the first option is log data table row line to SD in a ULG file format. So that's the one that I have selected already in this program. I'll open it up so we can walk through. And in most of these blocks as well, there's a nice explanation of what's actually going on in the white parameter here. You can see it's copying the data from the row in the selected data table, and it's writing it to a file that's called unilog.ulg located on the SD card. Um, so the main parameters that you do have to select are the data table project that you want to use. In this case, we're using log1, which we looked at before, is relevant to the log1 data table that we've predefined. So we're copying that log1 as our source. And then the other options we just have to select here are the row index. In this case, there's only one row. Um, and then also the output are just status messages as well. So you can assign you know, random memory integers or memory bits here uh, to, to check your status if, if it's not writing for some example. For some reason, you could go back and, and check these status bits to see, to see help troubleshoot what's going on in your program. So we'll take a look at the second example, or the second uh, subroutine for the different type of data. So the previous subroutine one was looking at the ULG file. Um, now we'll go ahead and look at the copy of the entire data table. So again, in net one, we're just writing our, our row to the actual internal data tables at that preset interval. Net three is just generating a file name. We won't walk into these uh, num to ASCII and string tools in this webinar, um, but just so you know, they can be found under the string menu. But essentially, net three is just giving a, a name to the file that we're going to write on the SD card. We didn't have to do that with the log file because the log file uh, is always a preset to be named as unilog.ulg, so there's no real option to name a file with a previous log line. But when you're actually copying the data table, it does allow you to be able to give a custom name to that. Uh, so if we look at the actual function block in Net4, when I open that up here, again, there's a white description which goes through uh, basically what the function block is going to be doing. But in this case here, we're copying the entire data table. So the first option is the source, the data table. In this case, we're copying log two. Uh, so data table number two, log two, we're going to be using as our source. And you do have the option to only copy certain parts of the data table as well. If you want to specify a starting row, a number of rows, you can do that. But for demonstration purposes here, we're just going to be copying the entire data table. Um, so the, the next parameter you want to make sure you define as a target. So we do have to say where on the SD card we want to, to save that data to. Again, with the log file, that automatically saves it in the log folder. There's not a whole lot of options. But with the, in the full data table, you can see we can pick um, the four different subfolders that we want to save it in, or also the main root folder as well. So since we're doing a data table block, you can save it in any of these, these four folders that we have available. In this case, it's just saving it to folder one on the SD card. And again, you can give a name to the UDT file. It can be a constant value if you like. Um, you could type it in, call it you know, test table. Um, but as you can see here as well, the file name actually can be a maximum of eight characters. So it can be the full words test table. Um, but you know, for example, eight characters maximum is the name for the, the UDT file. But if I hit cancel right now, it's saved to a, an indirect value, a memory uh, integer, 
530 in this case, which you can see is also the output of those string uh, blocks that we just briefly went through. Um, but the main thing here is that we're giving a file name. In this case, it happens to be an indirect name. Um, next options, if you can select whether you want it to overwrite or append. Here, we're just going to be overwriting the entire data table. Um, so we just click the, the little radio button for overwrite UDT file. The next, next thing we'll look at will actually use append, so we won't talk about that quite at this moment. Um, again, you just have status messages, which you assign to unused uh, memory integers and memory bits to help you troubleshoot your, your program. So subroutine number three. Again, you can see it looks almost identical to, to subroutine two because it really pretty much is. We're using the same function block, data table to SD. Again, found under uh, SD menu, SD utilities. Write data table to SD UDT file. So if we look at the block, again, you can see it's identical to the previous one. Um, we just have our different source data selected. This time we're, we're copying log three, which is our data table three. And we're going to be placing the, the file into, this time, data table number two folder. Uh, again, this can be whatever, whatever folder in here you like. Uh, but in this instance, we're just copying to DT2. Here as well, you can see we're using a static file name before we had an indirect string to name files, but you can also have a constant value. Um, app dt append data table, in this case, it's just a constant file name. And this time as well, we're appending to the UDT file. So instead of overwriting that table every single time, uh, now we're going to be appending to that UDT file. So it's creating like a subdivision, essentially, in that UDT file. And you can also assign uh, names to those subdivisions, which in this case is assigned to uh, a tag name and indirect value. So before we look at the CSV, we'll hop to number five. Number five, um, in this case here, we're copying. You can see as the function block says, we're going to be reading the tag from the section of the UDT file. And then we're going to be placing that, that uh, information that we just read back into the, the internal data tables of the PLC. So not quite too much to select here. It's very similar to the other blocks. You have to select the source folder on the SD card. So we're going to be taking our DT2 folder that we just wrote in subroutine 3. Um, so we're going to be taking that file. The file name that we just saw was appdt. Again, we're reading from that particular file. And uh, this time, we're going to be writing the value, the target data table, to log 4. So essentially, in here, we're copying from the table um, the information that we have from the SD card and replacing it in the table that's called log 4 on the PLC. So this, this one is going the opposite direction. Uh, but it's, it's relatively straightforward as well to set up. Um, for the read options, again, you can have a numeric tag number or also a text tag. Uh, in this case, we just specified a text tag number to be able to read from. So I'll close out of here. And we'll go to our CSV subroutine. Uh, this one is set up just quite a little bit different than the other the other three options that we looked at, or four options, I guess. Um, instead of using the UDT file or the ULG, this time we're actually going to be writing to a CSV file, which is directly openable in Microsoft Excel, for example. Um, so whenever you're writing a, a CSV file, there's two, two different function blocks that are required. First thing you need to do is prepare the data that you want to be able to, to write, and then the second function block actually writes that data. Uh, so again, these function blocks are found under SD, SD Excel Utilities, and the two that we have here are create the Excel delimited line, which is where we prepare the file, um, and then the write delimited line is where we actually write that file. So looking at net one, we can see uh, similar to the other ones, we have our writing every one second. We're checking our make sure the card is present, write enabled, um, and nothing is in progress already. So we'll open up the SD delimited line. Uh, within here is where you actually specify the, the columns for the row that you're going to write. So each number one, two, three, four here is going to be a, a cell in the row that you're defining. So in this case, we're going to be writing our, our date first our, into the first cell, our time into the second cell, 
and then just two random numeric datas to our, our cells three and four. So within with each of these cells, uh, you do have to define delimiter one and two. Um, so when you're when you're writing your your cells, you have to make sure you select delimiter as CSV and null for for all of your cells except for the last one. So what we're saying, if you open it up, you can see you just select CSV, which is our comma, and then a null. Um, so we're going to be writing a CSV number 2C and then a null for all of our cells except for the last one. And the reason being the last one that you have defined, in this case number 4, you can see the delimiters are carriage return and line feed. Uh, basically we're just telling it to wrap around down to the next row once we finish writing this first data. So each of your, your cells 1, 2, 3 in that line are going to have a, a CSV and a null as their delimiters. And then the important thing is that always your, your last um, data line, your last cell that you define, make sure you have a carriage return line feed as your delimiters. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, the other parameters we have to define here are our start of buffer, essentially. So I said we had to prepare the file first in this delimited line block. So what we're doing, you can see I've assigned in this case MI560. So we're gathering up this information that we just defined in our source data, and we're storing that into a vector, which is starting at 560. So we're preparing all of our cells of data, and we're writing that to a, repairing that to a file location, MI560 in this case. Um, it's good to make sure you reserve enough memory integers that you'll have space where you won't overflow. But what's nice is that you can see in bold, it tells you how many, how many memory integers you're actually going to need for this amount of data. So for our four cells here, we're occupying MI560 through 568. Uh, for all those characters and all that data that we just prepared, it's going to be occupied in those, those uh, nine MIs there, 560 through 568. So really, you just have to make sure you define a starting starting memory integer, which has enough space where you're going to start preparing that data. In this case, we did 560. Um, the next option you can specify is the max length. Again, um, just make sure you have a, a maximum amount of bytes. And again, you can see too, under total size, it tells you how much each is going to occupy. So it really calculates everything out for you. There's not a whole lot that you have to take into consideration there because it does all the, the calculations for you. Just make sure you assign enough space for that, uh, MI560 in this case. Uh, and then the output parameters, uh, 589 and 588 in this case, they're really just um, more status, status messages. It tells you the final byte size and also any other statuses if you need to do some sort of troubleshooting. But the main thing here is prepare your cells with the relevant data. Um, here we use four, and make sure that your last field, your last cell that you define has a carriage return line feed, and that data will all be stored starting in the output that you define, in this case, 560. So I'll cancel out of here. Now, the second block, I said we have to prepare the data first, and then we have to actually write it. So the second block we have in series is the write delimited line. So you just have to make sure here, the source data, we're starting our source vector data at MI560, which we just specified in the previous block. So 560 is containing our cells that we just prepared. We're saying that's where they actually are. That's where we want to, where we want to write from. So we're writing the information that we just prepared into MI560. That data is going to be written to the target SD card folder that we specify. Here, you can see there's a special folder that was defined on the SD card for these type CSV Excel files. So here we're just writing it to Excel 1. Again, you can write it to either the root folder for Excel or any of the four subfolders as well. So you have to specify the target folder and then also a file name for that CSV file. Uh, here we just called it a static value of log4. It can also be an indirect value if you wish, um, but here it's going to be log4 as our static file name. And it's important to note as well that um, like any of the